Hola everyone, Ian here, and today I have a first. I have a coffee that I've actually had before. Um, I actually grew up with Cafe Bustelo in the household, and me and my brothers always like to call it Cafe Busty. And anyway, it's actually been a few years since I've had Cafe Bustelo, so I figured it's fair game for a coffee review because my tastes have changed over the years, and it'd be interesting to see if I still like it or if maybe I'm a little bit cooler on it now. Uh, the company history is pretty neat. It was founded, pardon me, by Gregorio Menendez Bustelo, who traveled from Spain around to Cuba, and then he finally settled in the United States in 1917. And then while he was in the United States, he was able to found the Cafe Bustelo Coffee Company in East Harlem, New York, right around 1928. And it's pretty cool, like him and his wife, they sold their coffee starting out to people that were leaving the theater. So they'd work during the day and sell coffee, you know, when people came out of the theater. It seemed pretty solid to me. And they were able to work their way up and they were able to save money by, he was able to work at a restaurant and they were able to keep selling their coffee to these theater patrons to where they eventually opened up their storefront in 1928. And in the 1930s, they began kind of selling their coffee to bodegas, supermarkets, other people growing it throughout the years to the huge distribution it has today. And in 2000, it was actually purchased by a rival company called Roland Coffee Roasters out of Miami, Florida. And then in turn, Roland was bought by J.M. Smucker. Is it Smucker or is it Schmucker? Correct me on that. In 2011, and for those of you who recall from my Folgers episode, Folgers was also purchased by J.M. Schmucker. So that's it's pretty smart on their part, buying some of the bigger coffee brands. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure jelly is their bread and butter, but it's always good to expand. Uh, but enough about jelly jokes. That's not really my jam anyway. We're going to take this Cafe Bustelo, a.k.a. Cafe Busty, mix it with this Dakotian mug, a.k.a. Dakotian. See what happens.
got my freshly brewed Cafe Busty coffee here. And I kind of mentioned it earlier, or I grew up with this in my house. One thing I want to note is I've always found their packaging to be very distinctive. I still remember, I don't remember obviously the name of the episode or which season it was in, but I still remember there was, it was probably even more than one episode of this was in Two and a Half Men, not specifically this can, but obviously the product was in Two and a Half Men. And I remember it distinctly because I could recognize it, but it was never out in front of the characters. It was never staged in front of the characters. It, I remember it always being in the background. And I think that says a lot about your branding when even when it's like something that's not supposed to be the focus, like you can still register that and remember that. And I, when I was doing the research on the history, I guess their coloration and even their logo with the nice lady sipping coffee is I guess pretty well known in the art community. And a lot of people have been inspired by that as well. I also like that they have English and Spanish. Kind of give it that full, you know, Latino American feel to it. And they also mention, I'm gonna mention it because it's hitting me right now, that it has an irresistible aroma, which I'm definitely catching right now, and I don't even have it to my face. I don't know if I call it irresistible, but it's definitely making me hungry, which is definitely a good thing, because it's got a, like a, almost like a very bold, like a bold, almost like hints of fruit kind of smell to it, which is maybe that that's making me hungry. But enough about sniffing coffee. Let's give her a taste. Ooh, but before I give her a taste, shout out to my friend Andy, who has previous work experience working as a barista, and he informed me that to properly taste coffee, instead of sipping it, I should slurp it kind of like a heavier soup because it kind of gives it more aeration and wraps the coffee around the taste buds on your tongue. So we'll give that a try. Well, if you don't like slurping noises, I'm sorry to inform you this actually works. This is a much better, oh, much better way to like taste the coffee. I wanna say I'm still like detecting like, just like in the scent, maybe like a lighter, maybe you shouldn't use lighter, but almost like a slight hint of fruitiness, but not really all that much. I'm terrible at describing coffee, as you all know. Um, I am improving, uh, but gosh darn it. Maybe I shouldn't give away where. All right, well, uh, you probably already know. So this one, is it an oh yeah? Yeah, it's an oh yeah. That is, it is not an oof. It is not meh. I'm pretty sure Cafe Bastello is back in my home rotation. I don't know why I took a few years off from drinking it. It is very good. I very much enjoy it. I think if you have someone over that doesn't like a, like that strong, stark coffee taste, but maybe is looking for a little, some, something more approachable, I definitely point them out to this one. Uh, if you've had it yourself, feel free to comment below what you thought about it. If you want to try it, feel free to let us know below. Uh, I will link a uh, direct link on where you can pick up Cafe Bastello for yourself. And I also include a link below on where you can pick up your own Decodian mugs. So until next time, see you next time.